This is Coyote News. Tonight on Coyote Sports, the Coyote football team falls to Western Illinois and an offensive lineman is being treat treated for a spinal cord injury. Plus, Coyote News' Sean Bauer is live with a member of the swim team to talk about their winning meet this past weekend. I'm Eric Carpan. And I'm Anthony Gosh. The volleyball team picked up a win this weekend and faced rival SDSU last night. And in, in the Reiner's report, Devin gives you his take on what a college football athlete is doing for a good cause. But first, the headlines. Levi? The Chicago Cubs beat the St. Louis Cardinals last night 6-4 to win their NLDS series three games to one. This is the Cubs' first ever series clinching win at Wrigley Field in franchise history. They'll play the winner of the Los Angeles Dodgers and New York Mets series. Chicago is looking for its first World Series title since 1908. Former NBA player Lamar Odom was taken to a Las Vegas hospital yesterday after he was found unresponsive at a brothel in Crystal, Nevada. Odom is fight, now fight, fighting for his life. No immediate cause is known yet, but Odom has dealt with drug problems in the past. Odom hasn't played in the NBA since 2014. The University of Southern California has announced that head football coach Steve uh, Skartian was dismissed from the program Monday. Sarkisen was had several instances with alcohol abuse and was fired for not living up to the standards of USC. Sarkisen was entered into a rehabilitation center since his dismissal. And those are your headlines. The USC football team lost its second game in a row, falling to Western Illinois 40 to 21 on Saturday. The Leathernecks were able to score in it on each of its first seven possessions, including three touchdown drives to begin the second half to put the game out of reach. Ryan Sager threw for 197 yards, while freshman running back Michael Frederick rushed for a season-high 90 yards to lead the Coyotes offensively. The loss moves USD's record to 2-3 and three overall and 0-2 and on the Missouri Valley Conference play. The Coyotes play four-time defending national champions North Dakota State this Saturday in Fargo. During Saturday's football game, sophomore offensive lineman Sam McLearen sustained a spinal cord injury. McLearen was experiencing numbness and lack of mobility on his right side. He was transported from the Macomb, Illinois Hospital to the hospital in Illinois, Iowa City. He, was, he has regained limited mobility and has been able to walk with assistance. He'll be moved to the rehab center in Cedar Rapids later this week. The football team wasn't the only group of Coyotes to take on Western Illinois this past weekend. The USD men's and women's swimming and diving teams swept their home opener against Western Illinois on Saturday. The women won 141 to 66. Junior Ali Falk won the women's 400 meter individual medley. And junior Grayson Herding finished in first for the women's diving team. The USD men won 134 to 108. Freshman Hunter Paget led the men with two wins, including a setting a new school record in the 400 meter freestyle. That record had stood since 1996. The Coyote women return to the pool on October 22nd when they take on Northern Iowa. The men are back in action on November 6th as they travel to Ames, Iowa for the Iowa State Triangular. Now, Coyote News' Sean Bauer is live in the muck with junior swimmer Jake Knowles to talk about the team's success this weekend and to preview the upcoming meets for the team. Sean? Thanks, Anthony. The men's swimming and diving team won eight out of 13 events this past Saturday against Western Illinois. I'm here with Jake Knowles to talk about how the team's preparing for the rest of its season. Thanks for stopping by with us today, Jake. First off, first meet of the season, you guys are able to, you know, have a pretty dominating performance against Western Illinois. What does that do for team morale? Oh, it's really good. It really uh, builds our confidence going into the rest of the season. To start your year off with the wins are a really big plus for us. Now in swimming, you are timed as well as place-wise. Uh, for you guys, do you measure success on either of those, or how, like how do you guys measure your success throughout the year? As of right now, we're just aiming for times. I mean, it's great to win races, great to win meets, but we just want to see our times progress as the meet, as the season goes through meets, and then towards conference and bigger meets, we looked for places and for faster times. All right, now you guys don't have a, the men's team doesn't have another meet until November 6th. Uh, does it ever get 
frustrating without having without being able to compete and only having to practice for those weeks? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a lot. You know, swim season, seven months long. We wake up every morning at 5.30 for 6 a.m. practice. And without me, there's nothing to look forward to. It's just endless practice and practice and practice, really. All right, thank you. That was Jake Knowles of the swim team. Him and the Coyotes compete next November 6th in Ames, Iowa at the Iowa State Triangular. Live from the Muck for Coyote News, I'm Sean Bauer. Thanks, Sean. The USD volleyball team fell in straight sets last night to rival SDSU, but were able to pick up their first conference victory of the season as they trumped Oral Roberts with a 2-1 win in the Coyote Den on Sunday. The Coyotes had an early lead in the first set, swatting down nine kills. Junior Audrey Rigg led the Coyotes in scoring with 19 kills and 11 digs. Junior Haley Jorgensen earned her career high with 12 kills and six block assists. Senior Kelsey Biltoff and freshman Haley Dothseth each contributed 11 kills for South Dakota. Oral Roberts took two sets and three, putting them above South Dakota two to one. South Dakota rallied to win the final two sets for the win. The Coyotes play next this Friday as they host IUPUI at the Den. Even though their first game doesn't play, take place for another month, the men's basketball season is underway in the Dakota Dome. Top recruited freshman Tyler Hagedorn says he's been learning how to manage his time with Division I athletics. On top of taking 15 credits in his first semester of college, Hagedorn says he's trying to maintain good grades while attending practice every day. I never did um, <laughs> a homework in high school, and then all of a sudden it's just like, I'm in the library for 10 hours a week doing sitting down and doing homework, and that's just life, you know. Hegedorn says his college schedule is much different than it was in high school. Back then it was Netflix and chilling at home, and now it's, you know, you go straight from the library, straight to practice, straight back to Kyle Village and sleep, and it's just a repeat every day. The Coyotes are set to open their season against Wright State on November 13th in DeKalb, Illinois. On this week's Reiner's Report, Devin discusses how flooding in South Carolina disrupted a college football game, but ultimately showcased the compassion of an athlete as well. On Saturday, the game between the LSU Tigers and the South Carolina Gamecocks was scheduled to be played in Columbia, South Carolina, but was moved to Baton Rouge, Louisiana because of flash flooding across the state. This definitely put the Gamecocks at a disadvantage not being able to play in front of their home fans, but there was no other option. LSU won the game 45-24, led by star running back Leonard Fournette, who has been outstanding this season. His 158 rushing yards on Saturday was his least efficient game of the year. His accomplishments so far have completely blown my mind. But what Fournette decided to do after the game showed he is a great person as well as a great football player. In his post-game press conference, he told reporters that he was going to auction off his game-worn jersey to help benefit those affected by the flooding in South Carolina. Fournette knows what it's like to be affected by tragedy. His family was displaced from their home because of Hurricane Katrina when he was only 10 years old. The NCAA initially said that this would be a violation of rules, but because Fournette himself wouldn't be profiting from the sale of his jersey, it will be allowed. I am glad the NCAA is allowing him to help those in need. It seems like all we hear on the news is athletes getting into trouble, so it's nice to hear a story of an athlete doing something good and giving back. And that's the Reiner's Report.